hello guys and welcome back to the channel so guys we're back there again the 2023 presidential race for nigeria i know we're still a few years away but of course you already know that the drum beats and the activities towards that uh, destination is already thick and fast so we're back at it again we are towards the 2023 presidential elections the two main protagonists of course El Rufai of Kaduna State and uh, uh, Bola Tinubu, a Yoruba man versus a Fulani man that is essentially what it boils down to so with that guys I bring you this 2023 presidency power should return to the south governor El Rufai so this is now a concession and an alarming uh, pronouncement from uh, Kaduna State because this guy, of course, is in a prime position to challenge Tinubu. And there's a lot of people that are patting him on the back and aligning themselves with his ambition. Uh, Obasanjo being one of them. The whole of the north, of course, being part of it as well. And some elements within Yoruba land as well. Because you know the Yoruba uh, are famous for treachery, that Afonja behavior. So this guy is gathering momentum. But uh, now, in a vault phase, in an about turn, a 360, the headline again, 2023 presidency, power should return to the south. And this is El Rufai uh, saying this. So now, let's now see what the liberal of the uh, Fulani hegemony is having to play in this never-ending chess game because I have no doubt this is just a chess play at least this is my reading but then of course let's get into the narrative Governor Nasu El Rufai of Kaduna State has expressed his views about which geopolitical zone in Nigeria should be the next to take over the presidency the governor said that at the end of President Mohamedou Buhari's administration in 2023, power should be zoned to the south. So this is what he said. And now let's get into more of the details of it. He said that it is a natural and general understanding in the All Progressive Congress APC as well as Nigeria that power should rotate between the northern and southern parts of the country so that this is now a conciliatory tone by this guy who is uh or just off the back of this narrative and please believe that i do not believe this guy for one moment because i just believe that this is a chess move but just off the back uh singularly of this narrative this is a person almost as a standard on in the history of nigeria that is put in the best interest of the country ahead of himself because of course i'm saying the best interest of the country not because i think that uh Tenobu would make a fantastic uh, president he may or may not there's a possibility that he may and there's a possibility that he may not so it is whichever uh, part of his elements that he brings into that seat that will determine how things will go if he brings that uh two bullion van sort of mindset into the presidency then it's just going to loot the country die we are saying that we are seeing historical lootings under this uh, buhari administration at the moment but when tinobu uh, comes in or if tinobu comes in and it comes in with that two bullion van mindset is going to just rip the place apart and it becomes the richest man on the planet but it's going to loot that country dry but if it comes with a nationalistic outlook to say that look let's see what we can actually make of this country it does have with a name to do a decent job in uh, rebuilding that country or really building that country we keep saying rebuild we keep saying rebuilding uh, nigeria as though nigeria was ever fantastic at any point it's never been gotten right it's always the possibilities and the potentials that people hinge their hope on regarding nigeria but there was never a time that nigeria has ever gotten it right so this idea of rebuilding the country really is a misnomer but then we carry on let me just see where did i last uh, uh stop so we go on to this the kaduna state governor said the general political consensus in nigeria is that the presidency should rotate between the north and the south it is not written but everyone understands it so now let's just pause again because we're pausing a lot uh because there are salient points that we need to address so now this that point that this guy is making really is a 
point that is one uh, it stands uh, uh, as a truth as an understanding but then it also stands as a surprise for somebody one of his ambition and uh, in the position that he is to seize uh, control of the Nigeria space and also a northerner to say this because yes the uh, rotation of the northern and southern thing is not something that is situated within the Nigerian constitution but it is the broad understanding of every Nigerian that for that country to have a harmonious existence especially off the back of that uh, Abiola incident because it was of course that Abiola incident that instigated that and it's a uh, PDP policy originally. Uh, I'm not sure if it's even in their statute book, but it's a PDP understanding which has now been adopted by the whole country as a general consensus that look, you have your turn and then we have our turn and then we'll build the country of that. So this guy is exactly right. But then of course the drum beats that we have been hearing in previous months, especially after February 23 when uh Buhari was uh, rigged back into power by uh, Yakubu, uh, Mahmoud Yakubu. So after that, um, the drum beats then was that, oh, power will always stay in the north. The uh, rotation thing is not in the constitution. And then we've had a lot of people now, especially Northern Voices, coming out to back that uh, sort of uh, position that, look, there's nothing in the Nigerian constitution to say that uh, power should rotate between the north and the south. But really, it's a general understanding, it's a generally held belief that this is what will work and what has worked for that country. Although nothing really works in Nigeria, but really, just for that singularity of really have everybody having that opportunity to having... A that is the tacit understanding that the generality of the Nigerian population has about the presidency, especially that power rotates from the north to the south. So you have your turn and we have our turn. But then, of course, now for a northerner, especially uh, a northerner that is as positioned as El Rufai is, because the only name really being championed, there's no other name. Abba Kari is gathering money from the presidency because he wants to spring a surprise. But the only name that anybody knows that has antecedents in governance and can really be enough of a name to rival anybody within the Nigerian space is really El Rufai. There's no other northern name. The only other northern name, of course, is the uh, um, so uh, Emir of uh, Sokoto, but he, of course, has uh, shunned politics. He has no interest in politics. So there are three names in the north. The Sultan of Sokoto, um, El Rufai, and Dangote, Dangote is a businessman. He has absolutely no interest in uh, politics. The Emir of Kano is too busy enjoying the uh, Lady Lages and the luxury and the euphemism of being uh, the lord of his manor to want to have anything to do with uh, the Nigerian uh, presidency. So the only name really within that northern space that stands even the beginnings of a chance of anything, actually there are two names, is El Rufai one and Atiku Abubakar too. So Atiku Abubakar, of course, is PDP and nobody is going to let him come into the APC. So the singular uh, name that they not has to challenge Tinobu really if they wanted to uh, do that they are born to rule and will dominate, dominate you forever sort of mindset that some of them and a significant minority of them have if they wanted to follow that route the only name that they can rally behind is El Rufai but then El Rufai of course has now come out to make this pronouncement so is he jettisoning his ambition for the national good or is he just playing a move in a broader three-dimensional or multiple-dimensional chess play. So the future can only reveal this, but we carry on. El Rufai added that although this is not written anywhere in the constitution of the ruling party, it is acceptable in the spirit of political fairness. However, El Rufai did not state any particular sub-region in the south that should be given the chance to produce the next president. He insisted, but as a group, the northern APC will have to sit down and endorse someone. 
most likely someone from the south because after eight years of Buhari, I don't think the presidency should remain in the north unless there is some extenuating circumstances. Meanwhile, it's been reported that a former governor of Zamfara State, Senator Ahmed Sani Yarima, had declared that President Buhari would not endorse the ambition of Abola Tenobo. So I've already done a video on that. And you recall that this Yarima, by the way, was the guy that went to marry some very a young girl shall we just put it that way from egypt so we already know who and what this person is so we can dismiss him offhand but the real story that we are going after of course is now this uh el rufai character to all intents and purposes effectively conceding and bowing to tenobu because of course uh they say ah we've not endorsed anybody which other name do you have in the south tell me what name in Ibo. is it peter will be that will come and join the p the apc and contest with uh uh, with Tinubu, is it any name in Nibo land that will, is it any name in Yoruba land that will come and join the APC? And of course, it's going to be Tinubu if they are conceding it to the south, then they're effectively conceding it to Tinubu. And if they do concede it to Tinubu with the antecedents that we saw in 2019 under this uh, professor Yakubo character. Who was uh, telling us that the votes in Borno State were up by 80% and the vote in Igbo, in Igbo land was down by 30%. If we see the sort of uh, magical tricks, uh, INEC has no server and all that nonsense that we have. So if we see that sort of magical tricks, which we will see, then really, effectively, whoever becomes the candidate of APC is going to be the Nigerian president in 2023. Because, of course, Nigeria does not really hold an election. They just spend a lot of money to make a lot of noise to then install whoever they've appointed, whoever they have anointed into that uh, uh, space. So the anointing of uh, Tinobu is effectively what we're seeing now, unless, of course, this is a three-dimensional chess being played by this uh, Fulani character. But then you can't underestimate this guy because you have to think, of course, that El Rufai has had this ambition of uh, the Nigerian presidency pretty much for as long as Tenobu has. When Yadua became president of Nigeria, it was actually El Rufai that should have been the president of Nigeria. A lot of people were gathering around him then. I said, look, uh, Baba's time is over. Somebody has to come from the north because the power transits to the north. You are the preferred uh, pe per person. I think Pastor Bakari was one of the people that were echoing in his ears. A lot of prominent Yoruba names were echoing in his ears that, look, uh, El Rufai, go for this thing now because this window has opened for you. But uh, El Rufai, ever subsumed by his own sense of uh, importance and uh, it was his ego uh, because it needed his ego primed a bit more but then whilst he was preening his ego and peacocking and uh, feathering his uh and flapping his feathers suddenly uh they just went for yardua so he had that slot in 1999 and there has been nothing that ambition since and this is the last window of opportunity for him because el rufai of course is 60 now and uh by the time um whatever his name is uh bola Tenobu, by the time he served is um eight years so let him go for eight years and then after those eight years, you can come in. You still be under seventy, and Nigeria has a history, of course, of I having all these uh, septuagenarian type presidents. So you still be considered a relatively young man compared to the people that have uh, previously governed that country. So this is what they are telling him to satiate him and to steady him down. But if you then think that at twenty twenty three plus an additional eight years, that's almost fourteen years uh, to the future. Uh, no, not 14 years, but, but close enough, uh, at least 12 years or more, yes, yes, at least uh, 12 years or more. So, uh, this guy now, he, he cannot uh, bait his life and hold his life for, for those 12 years, unless, of course, he's given up entirely on that ambition and is just going to loot as much money as he can in this, this remaining uh, three and a bit years that he's got left in Kano State. He'll just... Uh, loot as much as it can and go for the money instead so now these are the calculations that are going on and this is my estimation and reading of this present situation but then what is your reading this is really what i am interested in
So now come share with me now what your thoughts are about this uh, Malam guy's uh, move in the comment section. But before you come share thoughts in the comment section, click on the red subscribe button so it turns grey. The bell button notifies you every time I drop a new video. Then come tell me what you are making of this move by this Malami in the comment section. So I'll leave you here. Carry on with you in the comment section. But here I say peace.